This is the Lion Bond B. Duction, 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 duction. Hello, this is Hector Vladimir. Today is September this, the 8th, 2016. And today I'd like to discuss two main topics. First, domes, and second, greenhouses. Uh, when it comes to domes, I'd like to discuss what they are, what the advantages is of using them, or what the advantages are in, in uh, the application of domes. Their construction, I like to discuss <clears throat> also uh, some of the uses that could come about or that could uh, enable you to get off the grid or, or help you uh, in getting off the grid. Also, with greenhouses, I'd like to discuss again what they are, their uses or applications, how they could be constructed, and what the advantages are of uh, applying the structure or technology, especially when we, we're talking about uh, getting off the grid or remaining being off the grid. And uh, we'll jump right, at, right in it. J uh, domes, domes are basically half spheres, as you may know. They are uh, somewhat rare in uh, everyday sites, everyday <clears throat> communities, you know, you don't see domes very often, uh, apart from skyscraper tops, skyscraper tops once in a while, you know, in big, bigger cities, uh, you see them many times on top of uh, churches, perhaps government buildings. Uh, in other words, they're pretty rare and, and uh, used mainly for fancy structures, very uh, decorative or decorated structures, usually quite uh, pricey. And why is this the case? Why are we, are we not seeing domes all over the place uh, since they are such <clears throat> convenient and uh, advantageous structure to use for building, for living, and for many other uses. And I will go into the advantages of domes here in a little bit. I would like to first dis uh, describe what domes are. Domes are nothing but, again, a half circle or half sphere. <clears throat> you could have a dome that's uh, a three-quarter sphere or a full sphere. That could also be called a dome. Uh, it's more commonly known as a geodesic dome or geodesic structure and uh, or a bucky ball or bucky dome after the inventor or the uh, person that uh, that came up with us many of the construction methods for the Bucky dome or the uh, sphere, half a sphere, whose name is uh, Buckminster Fuller. You can read uh, about him on several websites, so uh, look him up. He made various advances in the construction and application of dome structures. Very important uh, contribution. <clears throat> also, domes. Again, could be constructed in many varieties uh, as far as, you know, what what shapes are used to construct a dome, what materials, what methods to use. And I want to uh, maybe describe a few basic ideas on, on uh, methods, how to construct them, and uh, even what materials to use. And again, these are just ideas. These are not by any means uh, blueprints or, you know, the only way to do uh, or to build domes or to use them. So uh, listen to the few ideas and 
methods I have here and then go on and do your own research homework and find out a lot more about it this is only an introduction only a starting point a jumping off point for you to uh, perhaps get some ideas and get on it uh, and build you some domes domes again are basically a an array of arcs for the most part it is a structure or shape that is incredibly strong when built with uh, you know the proper materials and uh, built using uh, established methods <clears throat> they're not only incredibly strong but they are also very very uh, easy relatively easy to build and I'm talking about comparing it with uh, conventional building uh, most of us think of buildings and um, homes or any kind of uh, structure for for living or dwelling or any kind of uh, performing any kind of activity inside as squared or rectangular structures perhaps with the uh, triangular or delta shaped roof up top or pyramid shaped roof up top I mean this is what comes to mind for most of us when we think of a home a building a skyscraper an office building a government building school whatever we never ever uh, if so very rarely think of domes when we think about these uh, structures and I believe that to be quite uh, faulty biased erroneous because domes could very well serve for all of those purposes as far as living quarters uh, government buildings office buildings educational buildings and not only that but also uh, buildings to house store or grow even grow food as I'll explain here in a little while domes are a very versatile strong convenient and durable resistant structure and this is why I think they should be the norm not the exception they should be all over the place why don't we see them all over cities in most communities because we have been uh, basically taught to expect squared or rectangular structures we are <clears throat> we have been for a long time perhaps hundreds of years infatuated with straight lines straight angles and uh, I believe ever since the Egyptians uh, since they erected the pyramids and many of the other structures with Greek ar architecture followed by Roman basically Western architecture very much focused on straight lines and triangles and very very seldom they uh, <clears throat> stray away from those shapes why I think is a lot it has a lot to do with what we're taught what we're taught to like we are taught many things perhaps most things about our uh, surroundings about our culture it gives us a personality and that's one of the things that we are taught to like uh, I have to believe that most of our tastes come from uh, basically our parents our surroundings our friends family neighbors it's something that is basically passed down it's not something that's uh, inherent within us is not some sort of you know biological um, trait or you know how they what they call sometimes as uh, <clears throat> something natural something that's within us from birth uh, in the contrary I believe domes and round shapes are basically uh, structured 
shapes that we probably are more naturally inclined to be attracted to or like. Uh, probably against all now all uh, wisdom, public or popular wisdom, that straight lines and straight shapes are the way to go. Uh, straight angles. I don't accept that. I basically believe that if we have any kind of natural tendency, it would be toward the curves and toward the sphere uh, or sphere-like shapes. I mean, we are very much attracted to our round shapes such as, you know, the, the moon. Uh, I catch myself very often staring at the moon and staring at you know maybe around objects like uh, signs you know very often I confuse some signs with the moon and I uh, you know I question that and I am curious about why do I just automatically look up and stare at these round shiny objects uh, some of them not so shiny and it's I believe a uh, natural tendency perhaps something that you you become so used to like you know looking at someone's face which is basically a uh, collection of circles or round shapes such as someone's nose someone's eyes the face itself their head their forehead their chin their cheeks uh, those are all round and curved objects. Uh, someone's body is basically a collection of curves, <clears throat> a collection of, you know, very round and un uh, not straight lines, curved lines. So I believe nature is full of domes. Your cranium is a dome, as Jock Fresco has uh, said several times there are tendencies for things to become domes such as mountains over time you know through the um, eons and millennia gravity tends to pull things down and uh, basically round them off rocks are rarely left uh, with sharp edges many times the sharp edges are rounded off through uh, you know erosion rain water you know flow of water like like, a, like in a river or lake or water waterfall uh, <clears throat> trees are not usually squared they're usually round and rounded off probably you know I'm talking about the overall shape as you outline not we not counting each individual branch sticking out but the whole average of branches usually is in a circular uh, arrangement uh, whether it you know is egg shaped or elliptical or you know more or less of a cone for pines and stuff like that but they're pretty well rounded off, distributed uh, in a mushroom shape sometimes, which is a dome. Mushrooms themselves are a uh, type of dome shape. Uh, many, many uh, natural objects are dome shaped. Uh, some of them are inverted, do inverted domes, such as some flowers or many flowers. Most fruits are round or have a rounded shape I mean very many if not you know majority of not natural things out there have some sort of rounded shape or domed or spheric shape so domes are uh, very very prevalent in uh, nature and I believe we have evolutionarily uh, being adapted over the eons <clears throat> to uh, not only 
like or seek such shapes for shelter, for comfort, for, you know, to eat. But uh, we are basically built ourselves. We have evolved ourselves with very many domes and very many sphere shapes in our own bodies. So, uh, the dome is also a very strong shape. I'm not sure if uh, you probably have heard of the experiment of trying to break an egg by using, by interlocking your fingers <clears throat> and putting the egg in between your palms, both of your palms, and pressing on both ends. And it would be very difficult, if not impossible, to crack that egg because of the, um, the shape. The shape is a very strong one and the pressure is very evenly distributed throughout the shape, uh, rendering it a very strong and resistive, resistible uh, shape. So why not use such abundant and time and again tested over the millennia. It's been tested uh, through time, through nature. Why not use that shape for our homes, for our buildings? Uh, make them durable. They could be made in such a way that they can be easily, not only easily built, but also easily moved and easily uh, destroyed or recycled. It takes many hours and unnecessary hours in my opinion and many resources that are not necessary or not uh, uh, required if otherwise we build domes instead of squared or rectangular structures. Erecting four walls takes a lot more movements and resources and time and people than it would be to build a, for example, a cone, a cir uh, circular wall, because you can use, you can employ repetitive motion, you can employ, I believe, automation a lot easier, a lot uh, better, faster. You could employ, uh, for example, machines that just would lay bricks in a circular motion, perhaps using a center shaft <clears throat> or center pole and have the machine just go around the perimeter and lay bricks, lay struts, lay panels in a circular motion and then work its way in as it goes up. I mean the possibilities are many for building domes and I will get into uh, some of those ideas here shortly of course I'm not I won't be able to describe them uh, in much detail because of uh, the nature of the program is uh, mainly an audio presentation I will try to post some pictures to go to get together with this audio however uh, these ideas may still need to be developed and but to practice of course we don't see domes all over the place dome construction is very much uh, undeveloped in my opinion and only very few companies uh, dedicate themselves to build these structures uh, usually lots of scaffolding is required and I think we can do a lot better uh, auto and with the automation of constructing domes and basically have it um, mass produced there are a few companies out there that do build domes as a business, but many areas, perhaps, uh, perhaps, well, I know most areas don't have any companies that dedicate uh, full time and effort to the building of domes, not only for building, but also, excuse me, not only for living in them, but as storage units, as shelter, as uh, greenhouse, 
etc. So domes, again, are a very versatile and very flexible uh, structure to employ. And I will be discussing uh, many of the advantages that come with using building and using a dome and I will again give you some ideas on how to go about building it uh, you may prefer to just purchase one which is just fine more power to you if you're able to do it but building it is also <clears throat> an option that's quite attractive to many and I will give you uh, some hints on how to go about doing that I will be right back. I will take a short break and uh, continue with the show. Thank you for listening. We'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. And just to recap of what I'm going to be going over, uh, I'm going to be discussing two things. Domes and greenhouses. Uh, first, with domes, I'm going to describe, I have already described what domes are, some of the advantages. From domes from using domes uh, the applications I want to be going over that here uh, next and also I'll be going over construction also with greenhouses I'm going to be uh, also describing them listing the advantages uh, going over some of the applications or uses and also construction of greenhouses first with domes Uh, just to uh, quickly go over the description that I just went over, that I uh, more or less started. Just to recap on the description, there are half spheres, there are geodesic structures, or half globes, ho uh, hollow spheres. They are both strong, durable, they are pleasing to the eye, or aesthetically pleasing, and they are easy to build, relatively speaking, as compared to conventional uh, structures. Also, they are uh, very much natural structures all over the world. They are very abundant in nature. And one question I have for many of us, many of you out there, is why don't we see more? Let's get started with building and uh, making domes a lot more popular. Maybe sometime in the future, there will be the norm not the exception in all areas of uh, engineering and building <clears throat> domes the advantages first strength domes are again extremely uh, strong shapes this has been a fact that's been known for ages uh, and that is why nature has used this shape time and again. It is no wonder that nature uh, time and again has evolved to uh, employ domes in many, many uh, organisms, many uh, structures that protect organisms such as you know the shell of a turtle the cranium of a person or many other animals the shape of the eyes the shape of your for example your heel and uh, basically the bottom part of your foot is a collection of domes inverted domes but Domes, nonetheless, nonetheless, and time and again, many animals also use dome-shaped structures for shelter, for uh, you know taking cover. So they are, uh, without a doubt, very strong and durable structures. They are also can be made very durable. They can also be not durable. Uh, depending on what materials you use that could be also temporary structures that could be built with uh, lightweight materials lightweight uh, 
items lightweight uh, struts for example uh, yet remain very very strong and durable uh, it depends a lot on the material you use one and two on the method you use to secure whether it's the material the supporting frame structure or both and uh, I will go over some of the materials that you can use here a bit later under the construction of the dome the uh, construction section of this discussion and again the advantages are strength durability uh, also ease of construction we uh, touched on that constructing a dome could be a lot quicker and a lot easier and also with a lot less resources and and personnel and could cost a lot less money both in funds and resources again look up some of videos on, uh, on how to construct domes and they're often built uh, good sized domes are often built by a small team or a very or sometimes two even one person and these people are not uh, many times are not master builders to construct a home you usually need a variety of people coming in and uh, constructing that home usually you know 20 plus people to construct an average size home and uh, these people are usually very skilled and require many hours and high pay relatively high pay to perform this uh, construction of a uh, conventional home so constructing a dome uh, look it up online you'll see many people hundreds if not thousands of people with videos with uh, directions with how to uh, instructions on constructing domes and building these very durable and convenient and versatile flexible structures and they are not by any means again engineers doing these videos they're everyday people that decide to do something different do something that is known to be very advantageous and very uh, convenient when it comes to using the structure either for living growing food or storage or any other reason there's many others so the construction of this these domes is something that is an advantage it takes less space you can store more inside so the inside space is a lot more uh, compared to a squared or rectangular structure and uh, also you can do build it using repetitive motion uh, and with that uh, there is a plenty of opportunity for automation repetitive motion and automation go hand in hand that's why automation is possible because of repetitive motions without repetitive motion automation would be very very uh, difficult and expensive to perform sometimes many times not uh, worth it or you know very inconvenient to uh, make the effort to perform tasks using automation Give me just one second. And those are some of the advantages, okay? Applications or uses for domes could be for living, as homes, as places to, you know, spend your days and nights in. They could very well be, uh, very attractive looking homes very pleasing to the eye 
again we don't see a whole lot of them out there communities of domes out there there are by the way communities and many homes out there that are dome shaped but they're not let's face it too popular they're not popular at all in most areas I myself have not seen a dome where someone lives in uh, most of the domes I've seen, I've seen like I said are in very fancy and decorative buildings such as churches uh, some museums some libraries uh, have them some uh, government buildings some skyscrapers but other than that I have not seen someone coming out of a dome with their lunch bag and get into their vehicle and go and go to work I have not seen that there is plenty of them out there I just have not experienced it myself and I suspect most have not either so uh, some of the applications also include educational there could be educational uh, excuse me dome shaped schools all over the place and uh, domes have something that's quite uh, unique to them you can easily add on domes to an existing uh, dome for example you can add on uh, additional domes around a central dome for example for a school you can have the central dome large and have smaller domes all around it you can have four five six spokes three spokes such as in a wheel with the bigger dome in the center and smaller domes all around it bigger dome in the center could be more or less like the central lobby with the uh, maybe the office for uh, I'm talking about a school here and you know maybe some gathering area perhaps the auditorium could be in, in this central dome perhaps could be divided to an auditorium auditorium slash uh, gym I mean the the uh, many configurations are endless they are many and the possibilities are many when it comes to uh, using domes for storage domes could be used you know in a home since it is the most uh, efficient structure when it comes to using it for space this is a line, line deep not only for building it but also you know space wise uh, using a dome for storage is a very uh, attractive and smart option even if you have a squared or rectangular home you can use a dome you can build one have one built buy one to store your stuff again I don't advocate hoarding or you know stacking up on stuff but some things may be necessary to store such as food and water you know for everyday use and for uh, you know backup or emergency supplies you can also stack or store and emergency supplies, medicine, you can store uh, some extra clothing, you can store some items that you may need uh, to use once in a while but not too often like lawnmowers, bicycles, uh, and a variety of things. Uh, you can use domes for storage, be very durable and uh, space saving storage system governments can use domes for all kinds of stuff governmental buildings city police uh, courts just about everything that regular or conventional buildings are used domes could be used for it and perhaps better in a better smarter and more convenient and flexible manner domes can be used for shelter since they're very strong and weather resistant they can be used as uh, hurricane shelters even tornado and flood shelters 
greenhouse structures could also be a good um, candidate for domes growing facilities such as you know farms for animals or you know fields for growing all kinds of stuff fruits vegetables trees uh, and that will use the use of uh, greenhouse domes will increase the variety of things you can grow uh, and also will increase the variety of areas where you can grow you can perhaps grow tropical fruit in subtropical climates or even cooler climates and it doesn't have to stop there you can grow for example stuff even in very cold climates like in Alaska using uh, domes for both internal heating with internal heating and also uh, using the greenhouse effect with sunlight To go over a little bit uh, on the construction of domes, domes could be constructed using several uh, materials, uh, a wide range of materials. Panels could be used, which could be made of metal, comp composite, or plastics. It could, it, they could also be made of plexiglass or glass. Uh, you can look up how to use these materials and methods on building domes with these materials i'm not going to describe many of the you know somewhat intricate methods of building a dome i'll leave those uh, i'll leave that uh research up to you there are there are plenty of uh ideas of plans of instructions out there online you can look up to build your a you a dome you can also buy one they have them for sale and there are companies, although just a few, depending on what area you live, that come out and build build domes for many applications, some of which I described here for living, storage, uh, greenhouse, etc. You can also use bricks such as cinder blocks or red, you know, your conventional red brick to build domes. Uh, those are a bit tricky to use there's probably going to be a lot of scaffolding needed to use cinder block or bricks you need to have skill you need to have the resources the personnel or you need to just pay the people that know how to handle and work with blocks or bricks those are uh, you know a whole animal to uh, be able to master so you may want to look into it practice you may want to work with small projects and uh, before you jump into doing for example a home a dome home making uh, with bricks or, or bricks or blocks um, you can also use recycled materials as I've seen online and in many uh, videos or instructions you can use brick excuse me recycled materials such as bottles cans tires even uh, paper materials paper based products such as cardboard of course those would need to be treated those would need to be uh, coated uh, like paper mache it needs to be coated and it does last a long time you know for crafts and such the same could apply for domes you can build one for example from paper products with the uh, correct amount of uh, of course uh, adhesives and the correct type and amount of coating 
and it could last a very long time especially if you uh, after you code it and build the inner structure you can go back and put some sort of uh, tile material to uh, weatherproof it even uh, some of the roofing tiles could work if this structure is strong enough and the tiles are lightweight enough and uh, you can also brace the, the structure using again struts using um, lumber and other uh, you know metal lightweight metal uh, bracing again you can use struts they have kits for building uh, domes using struts which are you know bars with attachment points in the ends where you can use bolts and various other types of attachments and fasteners you can use lumber again wood and panels the panels could be metal composite glass plexiglass uh, the lumber of course would be more or less the frame there are various uh, shapes for the frames for for domes they may come up with to be domes nevertheless they could be made up of different type shapes it could be from squares to you know five star spokes wheels or you know try a series of triangles a series of you know hexagons pentagons or a combination of the two more or less like a soccer ball so uh, there are many ways to configure domes so uh, you may want to uh, consider and check those out make your plan or use an existing plan for that also uh, I'm going to jump into greenhouses greenhouses I'm gonna do a little bit of the description for them the advantages of using them building them the applications that they could be uh, uh, used for and also construction a little bit of how to construct them greenhouses could be domes but they don't have to be they could be just your regular squared or rectangular shaped home maybe with a uh, delta shaped or triangle shaped roof up top greenhouses are structures that allow radiation or sunlight for the most part in and restrict the heat out heat created by the radiation and uh, this is to trap the heat that's why they call it greenhouse like the greenhouse effect the dome could be again excuse me the greenhouse could be a rectangular structure or a dome it could be also made for a variety of purposes such as trapping heat trapping light or using light directing light to uh, certain areas and they can also be used not only for air heat but for but for water heat the advantages of greenhouses are that again they trap heat in a lot of areas it gets quite cool and you may want to trap heat and use that heat as uh, <clears throat> as a source of energy to replace your electric or gas heating which could be quite expensive in a lot of areas okay sorry about that greenhouses could be used for air heat light and water heat if those are the advantages of using greenhouses of course we want air heat uh, for cooler areas 
maybe to cool your home, cool yourself, excuse me, uh, warm up your home, warm up yourself, warm up an area, warm up food, plants, warm up, uh, you know, an area for growing uh, plants, for example, vegetables, fruits, uh, for lighting, you can use it as a uh, spotlight for an area, you can use it to light up uh, some space that may not have as much lighting or you may replace electric lighting or any other type of lighting with sunlight in a uh, living area for example or it could be also for commercial industrial uh, area very good way to light up an area uh, a lot of Walmarts a lot of big stores and commercial uh, locations warehouses do use greenhouse as far as uh, you know having sunlight come in into an area um, some of the applications include heating again for homes offices factories warehouses uh, you can heat up your garden you can light up your home and uh, I'd like to go into a little bit into water heating water heating could be uh, something that you do with greenhouses uh, solar water heaters are nothing but a type of greenhouse technology they trap the heat from the Sun in a very efficient efficient manner using a lot of times vacuum uh, tubes with uh, very little air or, or no air and they have another tube inside with circulating air which makes it a very efficient form of uh, excuse me an inner tube has um, water so uh, basically allowing a lot of the radiation to hit that water and warm up that water very fast and uh, thus creating water heats hot water for your home office place of business and uh, you can make your own water heater solar water heater uh, especially convenient if you live in an area with a lot of sunlight desert area for example uh, other areas that don't have as much sunlight perhaps don't uh, cannot take as much advantage of this because of the lack of sunlight and the, uh, sometimes at night later in the day when temperatures are cooler usually there's not any or very little sunlight desert areas have plenty of sunlight and uh, at times they become quite cool and at night or the later hours of the evening of the afternoon so uh, desert areas especially can take advantage of solar water heaters and save a lot of money and resources on, on energy heating water takes a lot a lot of energy the construction of greenhouses for example for growing plants to uh, for comfort for example in a home or office it's not that involved although they require some skill knowledge uh, they could be made of metal frame using also panels such as glass plexiglass panels they could have a wooden frame lumber frame again using glass or plexiglass panels and they can also be uh, cinder or brick structures with a uh, wooden or metal framed roof the whole structure doesn't have to be clear uh, as long as plenty of sunlight goes on goes inside of the structure maybe the top could be uh, made of uh, crystalline or clear paneling and uh, that may be enough for whatever application you have that greenhouse 
Again, it could be used for water heating. Uh, water heaters could be constructed with metal frames as well. They could be constructed with wood frames or using recycled materials. Again, you may want to use glass or plexiglass for the clear paneling. Uh, you want it to be as airtight as possible, the frame that is, and the paneling. So make sure you get uh, you know, the sealants, the right type of sealants. And you can look up some instruction for those online. You can make uh, a frame, for example, with lumber and wood, and put some uh, paneling on the top part of the frame that's going to be facing the sun, seal it, and you can run water, for example, with a hose or piping through that uh, frame, you know, as airtight as possible again, and of course, watertight. You don't want any leakage, and you can uh, basically run water through that leave it sitting for some time depending how intense the sunlight is this is how long it will take the water to heat some uh, some people have uh, built solar water heaters using nothing but hoses uh, preferably dark colored hoses and uh, you know building a a uh, airtight clear or clear top structure there container and uh, you know allowing sunlight to heat up this uh, this water hose of course with water in it and then that water is warm enough to use this hot water for homes again place of business you can also use recycled materials such as you know, again, hoses, uh, water heater tanks, old water heater tanks that are no longer being used. You can use tubes, pipes, metal barrels, anything that could contain water that could be uh, put in a greenhouse could be used as a water heater. The greenhouse, again, doesn't have to be big enough for you to go in. It could be just big enough to house whatever container has the water. Again, try to use metal, things that transfer heat easily, uh, plastics and rubber are insulators, quite good insulators for both heat and electricity, and uh, in the case of water, uh, greenhouses, we're talking about heat, thick plastic such as buckets and stuff like that may not be the best choice for using to make your own water heater solar water heater so make sure you make a good choice as far as what materials you use there are many again uh, directions videos instructions you can use online you can find online you can find it in you know books this is uh, fast dying looking for information in books online is the way to go if you can't get online for whatever reason you need to work on that first uh, before you even consider going off the grid just you know plain and simple and priorities of course matter and uh, you know look for direction there there are plenty of credible and very good and very clear and uh, coherent instruction out there and uh, easy to follow a lot of them are step by step don't get ahead of yourself don't uh, try to be you know too fast and furious doing any construction dealing with domes and greenhouses because it could become a safety issue very, very quickly especially if you're working on bigger projects so be careful be safe and uh you know stay focused and uh you know thank you for considering domes and greenhouses as a very very uh vital and critical component of your off the grid plans they work they are very durable and very uh helpful and a very critical part 
when it comes to getting off the grid. Thanks again for listening and hope to hear from you uh, in the comments section or any other way you can contact me. You can basically uh, share your comments or your thoughts about this uh, very basic and introductory um, audio recording. Thanks again. This is Hector Vladimir. It is September 2016. Thanks, thanks a lot.